A real quick reminder to anybody that's watching these videos, please subscribe to my Subscribestar. Just go to www.subscribestar.com slash Romanova Music and you can become a patron for as little as $1 per month. So with all of that said, let's head into Surrounded by Dream Theater. We're going to check this out right now. Okay, so here we come across quite possibly the easiest John Petrucci solo there is to play. However, it's maybe the most enigmatic John Petrucci solo that exists as well. It uses an edge style delay effect to deliver the dotted eighth delay sort of uh, feel that we got going on here. Harmonically speaking, all that's going on is the same chord progressions that happened from before. So, G to C, oops, I still got the delay on, to D, which is the 5 chord, and then F, which is the flat 7, okay? So 1, 4, 5, flat 7, or subtonic, whatever you want to call it. Now, to illustrate what's going on with this delay effect, I'm actually going to have it on the clean channel because it's uh, actually a lot more percussive, and you can really hear, like, what's happening, okay? So we have this, uh, all I'm doing is I'm playing... I'm playing a series of eighth notes, right? Right? And that's all I'm doing. And I can actually do that with all downstrokes. So uh, I don't want to give too much away here. Let me play it without the delay first, and I'll put the tab up on the screen too. So it goes like this. sound nearly as cool without the delay effect, although it is kind of funny to play. It's kind of like playing a, uh, an alternate tuned guitar song in standard. Anyway, let me show you what it sounds like with the delay. So that dotted eighth note delay effect where the note that you play is copied an exact dotted eighth creates that nice ping-pongy type of rhythm and a highly syncopated rhythm at that. But it also creates another set of guitar notes that are happening around you. So it actually sounds like you're playing all sixteenth notes when you're really just playing eighth notes. So it doubles up on everything. <laughs> But it almost gives it an entirely different sound, right? Well, it's because it does. So, there's really not much else to say about that. The song is, is at about like 164 to 166 BPM. Um, and, I mean, you just have to set it on your delay pedal so it, it equates to a dotted eighth note. So that your echo is hitting on the uh of that beat. So you have four sixteenth notes in each beat, one eenda, two eenda, three eenda, four eenda. You want your delay note, when you play on one, to hit on uh. So when you play on one, uh, right? Uh, one eenda, one eenda, one eenda. So that when you start playing eighth notes, it creates this illusion that you're doing sixteenths. This is an effect that was popularized by U2's The Edge. 
You could listen to a number of their hit songs where this occurs. It's basically his claim to fame. And I have to say, it's very innovative. It does get boring, however. I don't want to be too cynical here. I don't want to get too negative. So the solo is really just um, a series of a few notes that repeats over and over again. So here in this case, we're at the 10th fret of the B string, which is an A, and the 7th fret of the G, which is a D. So this is an A and a D. A perfect fifth interval. However, it's on top of the G chord. So this is the 9th, which is the A, and this is the 5th of the G. The 9th resolves to the G, which is the root, and then goes to a major 7th, F sharp. Back to the root. When it hits the C chord, we have a 6-9. So this is almost a reprise of the introduction. Then we're going 5, 9, sharp 4, 9, so we have a Lydian sound going on, to the 5th again. Now on the D chord, this is 5th and root. So it actually resolves the best on a D chord, because it hits a sus 4, then a 3rd, then a sus 4, and then we finally move when it hits the F chord, because it's time to move, right? Now this is just the perfect fifth, the sharp four, so we have an F Lydian sound on the F. Well, of course. Why wouldn't we? <laughs> we have a Lydian sound on top of the F chord, um, as well as on top of the C chord, right? But here we're doing the fifth, the sharp four, the third, sharp four, fifth, and then we resolve back to the G. Now this, that is the fifth of the G chord. And then we're doing a sus4, so this is G sus4, to so the third to the sus4, then on the C chord it's add nine to major seven. So it's like what was happening on the G chord earlier on in the section. And then for the D chord, this is like a root, flat 7, to major 6. So it's all within the key of G. So anything that works within the key of G is pretty much going to happen nicely on top of these chords. But these notes in particular work really well because of how consonant that they sound. And then this last part is just a, uh, a high G pedal point. It's almost like, a, I don't know, a classical type of vibe, right? But permutated to fit the style of the early 1990s. If that were in harmonic minor, we'd be back in the, uh, in the 18th century, okay? But we're not. We're in the 1990s. So we have to do things that involve ninths, all right? So here we're, we're highlighting the F chord with the F, E, D, C, scaling down, right? And then we resolve on that last note E, which is an A minor chord, so the fifth of the next section. section of Surrounded is a prime example of a simple bridge, a simple sounding bridge, becoming this completely orchestrated, calculated, dream theater-esque type of thing, right? A simple sounding thing, but it moves around so much that it becomes very difficult to remember. Now, let's go over what we have here. So the acoustic guitar comes in about halfway through, and I'm going to treat you to that when it comes time. I'm going to put both of these parts together. It starts off with just the electric, however. So we start off with an A minor chord, full distortion, then we go to an F sharp, which indicates a D chord, 
And we just do a 3 2 1. F sharp, D, D power chord on the fifth fret. And then we do this sort of thing this E minor walk down to F sharp to G, which is 1, 2, flat 3, and then flat 7. We're just doing a walk down. Then C sharp, that's an inverted A chord. Now on that A, we do a dive bomb, which is crazy because you don't usually see a dive bomb in a ballad like that. So, C sharp. So that drop down section anticipates a melody note of the next chord. So we start off with C add nine, and then we go to G over B. However, the melody note goes down to C, which indicates an anticipation of the A minor chord, which we hit immediately after. So keep it held down. Then we go A, open G, which is the minor 7. Now that foreshadows the G chord. And then we hit the A to the G, resolving to a regular G chord. Then we do this, E minor add 9. Then we do this D, F, G, F sharp, C sharp, F, G, F sharp, and then A, F sharp. Alright, so that's just a drop down motif where the pedal point is on the top of the F sharp and the G. And the bass note changes. And then we just go like this A minor 7. C with this little melody thing going here. C, E. We're actually doing a little melodic change there with the A to the G. And then we do a... That's a familiar old friend. That's the D with an added fourth. E, F sharp, G. And then we finally end on our G chord. Which then basically goes into the outro. Kevin Moore comes back in with the synth pad, and wait a minute, I think I got something for you.